Hello. Um, in a late change to the schedule, I'm not Molly, I'm Patrick. Um, we've swapped over. Um, so yeah, I suppose we've heard already from Clara quite a high level about Filecoin and some of the challenges um, and some of the successes. I'm gonna go a little bit kind of in depth about a certain part of it now, which is some of the retrieval side. Um, so yeah, as I said, my name is Patrick. Um, the last few years I've worked uh, as a program manager on retrieval markets. Um, and more recently, I have been leading on the station project. Um, and one of the, the things we're doing on the station team is Spark, and I'll come to that in a second. But we're gonna begin with a bit of a recap of the whole retrieval market landscape. Um, this diagram I, I built during a presentation at Field Dev Summit uh, a couple of months ago. And if you scan the QR code at the bottom right, um, you can get a link to that video. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing again, but I'm just gonna do a whistle-stop tour of this diagram. Um, so imagine that you are on the left-hand side of the diagram on your own laptop, and you want to retrieve a file from the Filecoin uh, retrieval market. So you'll make a request to a retrieval provider, and we've got teams such as Saturn or Titan. And we've actually got some people from the Titan team here today, which is great, uh, welcome. Um, We've got some retrieval providers such as Saturn and Titan, which will be uh, receiving those requests from, from the client. And then using uh, Lassie, which is the universal retrieval client, which can then fetch data from origin servers beyond the, 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 these L1 caches. Um, how does Lassie do that? It's able to look stuff up in IPNI, the, the network indexer. So IPNI stores a lookup of, you have a CID, and you can go to IPNI and say, please tell me which storage provider or IPFS node or even other origin server such as Daghouse uh, has this content and IPNI will tell you uh, where it is based on advertisements that it gets over the network from the storage providers. And the, the Lassie with this information in hand is then able to go on to IPFS or Filecoin or Daghouse to fetch this file. And you can also see in the storage providers that we have Boost. And Boost has enabled people to retrieve data from storage providers over GraphSync, uh, HTTP, and BitSwap. Um, so yeah, there's been, I mean, if I was speaking a year ago, a lot of these technologies didn't exist. So there's been a huge amount of work that has gone into the retrieval landscape over the last 12 months, which is really exciting. However, um, although the rails are there and in place for us to make these retrievals, um, we still have a retrieval incentive issue. Um, and that is that this, I, and I've, I've circled in on this particular interaction, which is where we're actually making retrieval requests to Filecoin storage providers. And even though we can do so over these different protocols, uh, we still need to find a way to incentivize storage providers to serve those retrievals um, and do it performantly and reliably. And here I'm gonna highlight exactly what this retrieval incentive problem looks like. Um, so, the, uh, the Phil Plus team, they had a team working on retrievals and building a retrieval bot, which would then make retrieval samples against storage providers, and the Spark team has done the same. Um, and we found that the success rate of making retrievals against storage providers is hovering at around 10%, which is not good enough. We have to improve this, and we have to improve this with incentives. As I say, we've got the, the rails in place to make these retrievals with Lassie, IPNI, Saturn, Titan, Boost, and all these technologies, we haven't got the incentives in place uh, to make this a successful uh, flow. Uh, and that brings us to Spark. Um, so Spark is a trustless protocol for sampling retrievals from Filecoin storage providers. And I really hope this can become the way that we start to get the incentives working for uh, storage providers uh, to serve retrievals. Um, and why is, what's this got to do with station? Well, uh, station operators running, running station are actually running Spark as a module and they're making retrieval sampling requests and they can earn fill for the pleasure. So we'll begin with some requirements of what Spark is looking at in terms of a problem space. Um, we've got a billion gigabytes worth of storage deals on chain. We've got 47 million active storage deals and 15 million piece CIDs. And when you're actually making a retrieval, you wanna make a retrieval for a payload CID, which, so there's gonna be even more of those beyond just the piece CIDs. Now, we also need a retrieval, 
a, a protocol which is going to govern retrieval incentives, it's, it has to be trustless. Um, we have in the past spun up uh, retrieval bots, which we've run ourselves at Protocol Labs, and got a measure of, of how retrieval is working, but we can't, that's not a sustainable solution where we're kind of paying to run these in a centralized way. So we've got a diagram here which is showing a retrieval client and a retrieval, a storage provider, uh, you can see with the Filecoin logo. And each part of this retrieval flow has got to be trustless or permissionless. So we need a trustless protocol for measuring retrievability. We need permissionless checkers or clients who are making these retrievals. Permissionless storage providers, which we've already got, serving the retrievals. And then a decentralized flow for how we actually evaluate how that retrieval's happened. So I'm gonna, at this point, highlight a few of the, the problems with retri retrieval incentives or trustless retrieval protocols we've had so far. One is that if we want to try and measure every single retrieval and have like a proof of retrieval, there's this very, um, I guess, clear attack vector where you could just spin up a whole bunch of clients and just, uh, just what we call self-dealing. You could just create lots of retrievals to show that you've done lots of, uh, you have made loads of traffic and then try and get yourself rewarded. So we have to design a protocol which doesn't allow people just to try and create their own uh, value by creating retrievals. And we also need to prevent against storage providers spinning up a lots of clients and testing themselves. Um, and also we need to stop storage providers being able to affect their own or inflate their own reputation to serving retrievals to earn more or damaging the reputation or ability to earn of other storage providers. Through the Filecoin Plus program, uh, when you're making a, um, a deal for a, what we call uh, the LDN Filecoin Plus, Phil Plus, uh, for large data sets, there's this agreement uh, that you should make the, that storage providers should make that data, data available for fast retrieval. Uh, but that isn't currently baked into the protocol. Um, so looking at the scale we have here for Spark requirements, there's a subset of this, which is the um, LDN Phil Plus program data sets, the ones which allow people to get that uh, QAP, quality adjusted power of 10x. Um, so Spark is specifically going to focus on, on that data set. And I think Will Scott's going to speak next about these different sort of tiers uh, or SLAs that we want to have for different sets of data. Because some data people want to store on chain and they don't, uh, on, on storage providers, excuse me, and they don't want it to be retrieved ever. Um, whereas other people want their data to be retrievable and retrievable very quickly so that they can then propagate that data into the L L2 networks like Saturn. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly run through um, the Spark protocol and outline the Spark protocol. Um, the first thing we, that we want to do is we wanna gather all of these Spark checkers into committees. Um, and that's because we can't trust a single Spark checker to make a retrieval and then report it and, we, we, and just trust their result. So we have to have a bunch of, or a committee of Spark checkers making the same retrieval and then we have to come to some sort of consensus about the, the result that they've got. And the other thing we need to prevent here is uh, spark checkers being able to kind of choose their own committees because then someone might be able to control a whole committee. So using DRAN for randomness, uh, we have a deterministic algorithm which essentially puts spark checkers into these committees uh, so that they can't choose it themselves and there's enough of them in each committee that it becomes very difficult for people to be able to uh, own a whole committee or at least have a majority in one of these committees. The next step is CID sampling. So for each of these committees, uh, we are, we, the, the protocol gives them a CID and a provider that they have to make a retrieval check against. Uh, the really key thing here is that checkers are not able to choose their own tasks uh, because then they could just make retrievals against storage providers that perhaps they're running themselves. And then the real key thing here is that the amount of tasks that each checker can actually run is rate limited uh, so that we can't have the self-dealing, so we prevent the self-dealing problem where checkers are able to just create lots of traffic in order to earn more from the system. They can only earn for the tasks they've been given by the protocol. So they're given these, uh, the CID and SP pair and they're off to the races. They're able to go and make a request. So here we have, uh, if you imagine that the, the laptop here that you see here is just one member of one of these committees. We're zooming in and seeing what they're actually doing. They're gonna make that request for a CID to the storage provider and they're going to, we hope, get back a response from the storage provider. And that response will include the data as a car V1 stream. Um, and it will, but it will also include at the end this metadata, which we call the retrieval attestation. 
and it includes a few things, we won't go into too much depth here, but also a signature from the storage provider over the entire payload that they've sent back um, to show that they have in fact interacted with this storage provider uh, during this epoch of the protocol. Once the checker has got this data back, um, it does a few things, it's, it kind of it does a hash over some of the data to then find out which part of data it then itself has to create a proof for that it's retrieved. But essentially what we're trying to do here is find a way that this checker isn't able to uh, create a proof that it's made the retrieval without ha having done so in that epoch at that time. And we want to make sure they have to retrieve the entire data rather than just the first few bytes or just the signature in order to be able to prove that, that, that this retrieval has, ha has happened. Um, so they do so and with just some clever hashing and, and choosing of, of, of bytes of the data and then like a, a, an inclusion proof up to a, a, a committed hash. Um, we are able to, to create a proof that this checker has in fact made the retrieval and this, this checker then submits its proof and the retrieval metadata that it's, that it's gathered around the, how that retrieval worked to the uh, Spark measurement service. The next three steps, measure, evaluate, and reward, um, is something which not just the Spark protocol does, but Saturn does as well. And we're generalizing it into this framework called the Meridian framework of on-chain impact evaluators, where you can measure how particular workers are, are doing something, and then you can evaluate their work in each round of the protocol and then reward them uh, for their work. Um, a very simple three step, but just kind of formalizing on-chain, uh, we believe is it's gonna be a really valuable thing uh, for a bunch of different use cases. As you can see in the diagram here, we've now got our committees back just to kind of show you, show you that they're all submitting measurements to this measurement service. And the measurement service then can commit on chain uh, a kind of a root, a root hash, which uh, accumulates all of the measurements so that we can then prove to each individual checker that their measurements were included in this commitment and will be included in the evaluation round. The next step, we evaluate over this. So at the end of each round, the evaluation service is able to access all of the measurements, uh, check them for fraud, uh, check them for other attack vectors initially, and we hope eventually that this will all move on chain as we get more confidence in the protocol and we're able to progressively decentralize it. Um, the evaluation service then assigns to each checker node uh, an evaluation which in total sum up to one. Uh, so as you can see, although it's quite small here, I'm afraid, um, you've got checker one with 0 0.2, checker two with 0 0.3, checker three with 0 0.5. Imagine there's just three checkers in this round of the protocol. Um, and it all sums up to one. Um, and then the final step, quite a lot going on here, but essentially we just say there's a, a pot, a, you know, a, an amount of tokens, in this case Filecoin, which is assigned to that particular round. And then we distribute it to the addresses of the checkers based on their evaluations in that round. So how does this actually link back to storage providers and the incentives to make them actually serve retrievals? Um, in the current protocol, we are incentivizing the checkers to make the retrievals, but we've got a few ideas about how this can then lead back into storage providers. So if we have an evaluation on chain of these retrievals that have been made and we're starting to get an idea of sort of like a reputation or just a scoring of, of each storage provider serving retrievals, then we could, we could filter that back into the QAP. And so here, as an idea, we could have the QAP times by some sort of normalized retrieval evaluation on chain to create a retrieval adjusted, quality adjusted power. Um, and suddenly then we're linking retrieval back into uh, the QAP, which is so, so important to storage providers. And the other idea is for us to create a Spark token. So um, when we submit those evaluations on chain again, and we're starting to build up a score for each storage provider and also to the Spark checkers, um, the evaluations they create, they might not just be able to pay out in Filecoin, but also in a Spark token. And we could then lock uh, Filecoin in to, to give value to this Spark token. So that's the protocol, um, and I'm very happy to answer more questions about it, because I know it's qu quite in depth for, uh, for, for where we are here. And um, it's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things we're still trying to figure out, but I think it's really promising as an idea for us to really get retrieval incentives going. Um, since 
well, it's, it's a couple of days out of date, this slide now, but since Wednesday, where we launched the payouts for station operators, uh, we've seen loads of growth in the number of people who are running station and therefore running Spark. Um, from 50 uh, continually running stations up to 1, 000, almost 1,500, I think it's beyond that now. And we're currently running 1.6 million Spark jobs uh, every day. And that's growing with uh, the number of new station operators out there. Uh, so we're really starting to sample the network and gather great statistics. Um, and yeah, just making strides towards Spark um, being a fully trusted protocol. And that brings us to the roadmap. Um, as I said, a few days ago, we launched payouts for Spark. Um, the next thing on the Spark roadmap is we would like to move it to be on an IPC subnet um, so that some of these on-chain interactions just aren't costing us quite as much. And then towards the middle of next year, getting Spark towards a fully trustless protocol. Great. Well, yeah, that's a brief run through of Spark. Uh, just to summarize what we went through today, we started off with just the retrieval market space in general and all the teams working there. We highlighted a problem we've got with retrieval from storage providers, which is that retrieval success rate is down at 10% due to a retrieval incentives issue. And then we've run through the Spark protocol, which is really trying to target this, trying to find ways that we can link retrieval back into some of the mechanisms that incentivize storage providers. And if you would like to start contributing, um, please go to fillstation.app, um, download the station app, and then you can start running Spark jobs as of today and start earning Filecoin for doing so. Um, and please pick up some of the station uh, merch swag on your way out as well. And then you've always got the QR code to find the, uh, find the URL as well. Uh, cool. Yeah, thank you very much.